I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, let us pray. Father, we thank you for this moment. Uh, we thank you for this day. Thank you for being our God. So, man, that carries us through till so far. There's nothing that you could do in the Panje Kwako. We know that you are God who work with us, you embrace us. So, Manja, you are God to open the ways for us. There's no way we can go without coming to you. Even this morning, Father God, we come to your presence. And we know my duty and responsibility is to serve you. And this morning, Father God, we come here because we know that you are God. Give us so much of this day and other days as we are going to depart here, going to our different places. We thank you for speaking with us in the whole assembly. Uh, for walking us in so far. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor in Jesus' name. We thank you. Amen. Uh, our scripture reading is going to be in the book of Genesis. Sorry. Book of Matthew, chapter 16. Chapter, chapter 16, verse 23 and verse 24. It reads as follows. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are your stumbling block to me. You don't have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Verse 24. Then Jesus said to his, to his disciple, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up the crowd the cross and follow me amen yeah we're just going to speak on two these two verses especially verse 24 then jesus said whoever wants to be my disciple must deny himself and take up their cross and follow me uh, this jesus it speak this to his disciples and what amazed me is he was not speaking to everyone, the close people that were working with him. And I think that they understand him more than anyone. And then he was speaking to them when he asked them, if I can bring a topic on this one, I would say a disciple called to be a disciple. Because they were disciples already. Now, one wonders that how can the disciple be called to be a disciple again? And when you look at it, 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 it took them out of Jerusalem and uh, they go to, to, to Caesarea in Philippi and then they start speaking to him. First thing that comes to my mind is when he wanted to speak to them, he decided to take them out of the noise of Jerusalem. Take them to the private place. If you can look at the place he speak to them, with them. It was a private place where there was no noise, no lot of people and then decided to take them away comes to my mind that whenever God's going to speak with someone, you're always concerned about the area where you're speaking with him. Secondly, the disciples were supposed to know that uh, they are the disciples. Now, it wonders me why again he called them the disciples, but they know that they are disciples. If you look at verse 23, it begins after his conversation with Peter, where after they spoke with Peter and then he started uh, I think what triggers him is the way Peter was thinking as a disciple. Because if you go to verse 23, he wanted to tell Jesus what to do. But he was telling them, I'm going to die and everything. And he said, no, you don't do that to us now. In my mind comes that Peter wanted to tell Jesus to do. His concern was Peter's attitude. And Jesus wanted to, the disciple to have the same attitude as his. When one is, rebu is rebuilding, Attitude is a, play a, a significant role. If one wants to, to rebuild or to build something new, the attitude plays a, a significant role on building. Now, if our attitudes don't change and at the back of our minds we think that we are rebuilding, that will cause a problem for us to the future. Now, I think when, when you are speaking with them, you told them that, no, 
your attitude, if you look at book of, of uh, Ephesians, sorry, Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, we need to have the same attitude that Christ has. Paul is telling the church that they need to have the same attitude that Christ has. He started by saying to the, to the disciples in verse 24, whoever wants to be my disciple, now he gives them the choice if they want to. Now my other question that comes to mind is, it's, the, it's him who called them to disciples. Now he's asking them, whoever wants to be a disciple, that means amongst the twelve, there was a problem with the people that they didn't want to be disciples. That's why he said, whoever wants that, they need to choose if they are going to be disciple or not. Now he says, choose to be a disciple or not to be a disciple. Now, it, again, I always believe that we always will live and die with our choices. Whatever we choose to be, it always we live and die with, with, with our choices. Started by saying, whoever wants my disciple, it gave them an opportunity to choose on to be or not to be. What is his disciple? The disciples are the people that they follow Jesus Christ wherever he goes, fully committed into, into his way. The disciple, they talk the same language. They have a relationship with their teacher. Now he's trying to say to them, listen here, Peter, let's have a strong relationship. Have a time where you speak with me. Be like me. And then if you go for verse 24, he started to give them the reasons or the ways of being this. His first he said, self-denial is important. Self-denial means deliver deliberately or intentionally to take a decision. He said, if I told you one to my disciple, in your mind you have a self-denial. Know that you need to deny yourself. When you walk with Christ, I always believe that if you are a Christian, it's always about the character. If you are a Christian, it's always about it. He said to them, first thing that you need to do, have a self-denial. Self-denial is to give up the right. The right that you have, you give up and then you took Christ's right. Self-denial, it's always to be, to be it's, it goes with being self-aware. You know who you are. And you know now that you are not in a right position with God. It goes with repentance, whereby you need to change your ways because you want to be like Christ. Lastly, self denial goes with a change with the with the change of character. We always, as I want to live, when Christian life is of a change of character. If our character doesn't change, we don't show the God. It's not about preaching about God, but it's always about living Christianity out. It's not about leading a church. It's always about being a servant of Christ. Serve God. And then everything that's followed. Now, here he said, please, the things that you want to do, they don't matter. Only thing that matters is that our character has changed. We'll rebuild every day and every night. But if our characters are not changing, and we think that we are following Christ, the best way to follow Christ, firstly, self-denial. Deny the things that you think that are important. We need to stop being selfish. We need to be Christians that let the Christianity live out of us. When people see us, we don't need to tell people that we are Christians. But people, they need to see to us that we are Christians. I always say, people, they don't need to hear by me that I'm a pastor. But I must live the life of a pastor in front of everyone. Even my kids, I believe that Christianity starts at home. If you want to be a follower, he said to Peter, whatever you are saying, Peter, it doesn't make sense. But first thing that you need to do, self-denial plays a major role. Secondly, he said, take up my cross. So about take, it's about self-denial without taking God's, the cross, it doesn't have the value if there's no Christ in the cross. The only thing that makes a cross to be valuable is Christ in the cross. Christ said to them, take up my cross. He said to them, literally say, die. Because when you take the cross, that means when they take the cross, you know what? Whoever who's got the cross is going to die. Now he said to them, die. There are many ways to die. You can die to self. Die to a lot of things that you need to die. Whenever he said to them, it was literally be willing and be, I know that you are going to die. When you follow Christ, you are being rich. Talking about being famous. Talking about all of these things that we think it is. It's about dying. When people look at you, they say, it's not the same person that you was before. Because you died yourself. 
You die to self. Say to them, take up your cross and die. Second, he said to them, when he's saying take up your cross and die, he means that put aside the selfishness desires. When he said take your cross and die, he said put up, you know, we always, as human beings, we always desire opposite with God. And that we need to trick others. When you start thinking, I'm always saying, if God is not in our mind, Christianity is a lifestyle. It's not a preaching method. It's not a big church. It's a lifestyle. When we live like Christ. When Paul says, uh, God, Christ lives in him. That means, it's, when you're a Christian, you need to understand that. It's easier to take out the cross. It means that, put off your ego strength aside. That means our egos, if we don't die, our egos will kill us. So it, it put up my cross. When you put the cross, it's not about the weight of the cross, but it's not about what's happening after the cross. Lastly, he said, follow me. He said, firstly, he said, he said, self-denial. Second, he talked about the cross. Lastly, he's saying, follow me. He said to this, this, this it, again, it took me by surprise. How he can say to people that are following him, and again said, follow me. That means there's a problem with the followers. He couldn't say, and understand how God, God sees everything. He sees everything. I think he look at their hearts and say, these are not following me. Say, so now, choose to follow me or not to follow me. He said, take up your cross and follow me. It means that the followers tr are trustfully to their leader. When you follow someone, you trust the person. You don't even have your ways. You always say, have your way, God, in my life. Even if you feel like you don't want to say, but in the midst of the challenges, you say, have your way in my life. You don't want to win always. The times where you say, God wins in my life. He said to them, take up your hand. He said, trust, they must be trustful. Second, they must obey and submit to his will. You know, he's saying, obey and say, when you are following me, know that I'm following God and I'm submit. I'm not here for my will. I'm here because of God's will. Now, when you are following me, you are going, your wills are going to go aside. You are going to follow God's will. That means it's not about his will or their will. It's about not having a will. You cannot have a will. When you are working with God, how is God's will is going to fit there? He is saying to them, uh, uh, they must follow him submissively and willingly. They are prepared to, en to endure hardship. He said to them, you might, when you follow me, be prepared to endure hardship. Once you follow me, hardship is guaranteed. Our gospel of today doesn't talk about hardship. Gospel of today talk about blessings. Gospel of today talking about being seen everywhere. Gospel of today has nothing to do about hardship. He said to them, be sure. When you follow me, be sure about hardship. Things are not going to go your way. It's going to be hard. Now it amazes when the pastor says he's giving up. Be prepared for hardship. We're not here to give up. We're here to follow our God. The Bible, when, when he's saying, we pray, I think God, he, had, he knows that because Jesus said, he knows that's going to happen in his life. Now he said to them, even if I leave you, be sure hardship is going to be there. When you follow me, hardship is guaranteed. Bazalwane, hardship is guaranteed. We don't, as Christians, we don't back down. Even how hard it is. Hardship in our way, it's guaranteed. That's another way, that's another thing that pushes us to prayer. That is why we fail in most cases. We don't have time to pray. We always have time to discuss. Trying to get our way, something that's not to disturb us. Let's, let's have it our way. Let's discuss it. Let's vote about it. How about God? When we discuss it, did you pray about it? He said to these people, they must this disciple. This was directly to the disciple. It had nothing to do with the Pharisees. It had nothing to do with everyone. He took them aside and speak with them. He said, this is what is in my mind. Twelve of them. As if he, and God knows that Judas is among them. 
You know, the, now they, 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 they have the obligation to choose to take the cross or not to take the cross. They have to choose if they want to follow or not to follow. To follow Christ is a choice. You choose to be a Christian or choose to be a member of the church. There is a line between being a Christian and being the church member. There's a big line. And there's no gray area. He said they must be prepared for everything. Lastly, the question I always ask myself, who am I following? That's always I ask myself. When I wake up Sunday, going to that pulpit, I always ask myself, who am I following? And am I following him to the right direction? Why am I following? Those things that come to my mind. And last thing that comes to my mind is my family following the person that I'm following. Because I always, for me, to be a Christian and then your family, they don't know that you're a Christian. It's a disgrace. We leave the Christianity at home, not at church. Now this thing starts at home. Now my kids and my wife, they must be sure that I'm a Christian. Let, let us ask ourselves, who are we following? My conclusion in verse 16, chapter 16, verse 25. Don't forget, you might lose your life while you think that you are saving it. He said in la that last verse, you are going to lose your life whilst you think that you are saving it. Let me assure you, we don't have an ability. We don't know what the future holds. The only person that always knows the future is our God. He's a God of now. God of the future. He knows whatever is going to happen in the future. Now if you don't trust God, who's got the future in his hands? Who are we trusting? If you don't, don't obey the God who's got the future in his hands, who are we following? Always human beings, they like to follow other human beings. Forgetting that we've got God in heaven. We've got Christ that came down for us. We've got men that lose his life. Because you are saving me and you. Ask yourself. You might think that you are saving your life. On the other hand, you are losing your life. Thank you.